Hey everybody, Jamie here, and a lot of you requested that I make a pop tab craft. Well, I don't know if you knew this about me or not, but I don't really drink pop um, or soda for those of you who aren't from the Midwestern United States. So, in order to get all those tabs, I bought a huge bag online. So, I thought I'd make as many crafts as possible with them. And I think you're gonna like them. Get ready as I show you how to make 10 different types of pop tab accessories. Let's do it, girl. All right, so other than collecting a whole bunch of pop tabs, the only other thing that you really need to grab is string of any sort, from neon gimp to ribbon to embroidery floss. Depending upon which accessory you want to make, you also might need scissors, needle nose pliers, strong crafting glue, cardboard, decorative embellishments, and jewelry connectors from jump rings to clasp closures. Now before you get started, you need to make sure that your pop tab is the right shape for crafting. Remove any sharp metal by bending it back with your pliers, sanding it down with a nail file, or simply snipping it off completely. This is what every crafting tab should look like. Also, as you work, make sure that your pop tabs are always facing the same direction for a professional uniform look. All right, let's pop tab to it. Here we go. One, the basic. Slip your ribbon up through the first hole of a pop tab before continuing it down through the second hole. Repeat with the rest of your tabs, sliding each one into place down your ribbon. And voila, in less than a minute, you've got yourself a bracelet, choker, or even a headband. All right, since this was pretty basic, let's move on to something fancy. Two, the fancy. Use a jump ring to connect the top hole of one tab to the top hole of another. Then connect the bottom holes together with a new jump ring. Once you've reached your desired length, add a jump ring to the top and bottom hole of your ending tabs. Connect these tabs together with a larger jump ring before adding in your clasp closure. To make this fancy accessory extra fancy, attach a few hanging jewels to the bottom hole of each tab. This craft so fancy. Na -na 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 -na. Three, the charm. Wrap jewelry wire around the border of one pop tab. Using a small jump ring or the wire itself, add in a tiny charm to one or both holes of your tab. Attach a jump ring to the wire at the top, and now you have a charm that you can attach to a necklace, bracelet, or other accessory. Or switch out the color of your wire and charms to add a few flashes of fashion. This charm is just so... Charming. Four, the stacked. Take one piece of string and thread it through the top hole of several pop tabs. Then thread a second piece of string through the bottom hole of these tabs. Tie a knot with your strings to keep the tabs in place. Add as many tabs as you like until your accessory is your desired length, making sure to tie your ending strings into another knot to lock everything in place. I think that this accessory looks best as a necklace, but it could also make a pretty cool slinky bracelet as well. Five, the chunky. Using your scissors, carefully cut a slit into the top center of each tab. Use this gap to slip in the top of your tab to the bottom of a stack of five tabs, closing that gap in your tab to lock everything in place. Repeat this process with four more tabs until you've got a set of five locked into another set of five. Continue this process of attaching the top of one set to the bottom of another until you reach your desired length. To complete your accessory, bind the top of your beginning set to the bottom of your ending set. This chunky accessory makes for really good statement jewelry, but you could also make this super long in order to fashion it into a belt or a wallet chain or something like that. Six, the parallel. Start with two pieces of horizontal string. Bring your top and bottom strands through tap one's top and bottom holes respectively. Grab your next tab, tab two, and place it under tab one. Bring your strings up through the middle holes of tab two, also making sure they simultaneously go back up again through the middle holes of tab one. Now bring over tab three and place it on top of tab two before bringing your strings down through tab three's holes as well as down through tab two's holes. Do you see the pattern here? Next tab on bottom with the strings going up through both and then the next tab on top with the strings going down through both. Continue this technique until you reach your desired length, securing everything in place by tying off your strings into a double knot on both ends. I think this is pretty great as is, but if you wanted to switch things up, you could change out the top color of ribbon versus the bottom color of ribbon, or you could double things up by having two strings go across the top holes while having another two strings go across the bottom holes, you know, for an option of four colors total. Seven, the crisscross. Start the process the same as the parallel. Once you connect tab one and tab two, however, flip these tabs over before crossing your strings into an X. Now bring over tab three and slip your string through the top and bottom holes, also passing through the center holes of tab two. Flip everything over, then add tab four on top, keeping your string straight, bringing it down through the holes of tab four as well as tab three. Flip everything over again, cross your cords into an X, and add tab five, slipping your string through 
through the top and bottom holes. Basically, you're creating the parallel pattern on one side with the crisscross pattern on the other, flipping the chain over every time you add on another tab. Here's what it looks like when finished. Crisscross them, am I right? Eight, the double up. Wind your way through the same process as the parallel chain, but only with the top hole of each tab. Then wind your way through the bottom holes of an entirely new set of tabs. Set these two strands down across from one another so that they mirror each other. Bring in a new string under the top hole of your bottom tab. Work this string over and under your next tab just as you would with the parallel in order to lock these two tabs in place. You'll then cross this string at a diagonal from your upper right part of your lower tab to the lower left part of your next upper tab. Then work your way under and over once more with your subsequent upper tabs in order to connect them in place. Here's where you'll bring in your final string repeating the same technique of going underneath your first tab and then over and under your second tab. This time you'll connect the lower right part of your upper tab at a diagonal to the upper left part of your lower tab. Again, pull this string up through the next hole in your tabs, connecting them together. This will form an X pattern with your string. Continue this process of crossing both strings diagonally from upper tab to lower tab and back again until you've connected your top and bottom sets together with a series of X's. All that's left to do is tie your end strings into a knot to lock everything in place. Here's what your accessory looks like when finished, and again if you doubled up your string through each tab. And boom, twice as nice. Nine, the pendant. Here's the only accessory where you don't need to remove the inner circular tab. Place the bottom hole of one tab onto the top hole of another so that they overlap. Thread a piece of string up through that inner circular tab. Now bring in a new tab and overlap its bottom hole over the top hole of your original set. Here's where you'll need to bring your string inside and underneath your set in order to pull it up once again through the center of the circular tab. Continue this technique of overlapping new tabs and threading in your string from underneath for six pop tabs total. When finished, tie a knot in your string to lock everything in place. This pretty pendant can hang from a bracelet, a necklace, or even be placed in your hair as a modern looking barrette. And 10, the flower. Cut out a piece of cardboard into a three quarter inch circle. Take four tabs and form an even cross shape on top of your circle, leaving a gap in the center. Then carefully glue each tab in place. Once the glue dries, take four more tabs and glue them at an angle on top of your original set to create eight tab petals. At this point, you can glue anything that you like into the center to create the butt of your flower. From a simple button to a medley of shiny jewels, slip some chain or string through a flower petal in order to have it dangle as a necklace or as a bracelet, or you can attach something to the back like an earring base or ring base in order to have flower earrings or a chunky flower ring. And there you go, you guys, we did it. 10 awesome ways of creating a pop tab accessory. I don't know about you, but I think that is fantabulous. Which pop tab accessory did you make? Tweet me at Jamie Petito, Instagram me at Hey Jamie, or let me know on my fan page on Facebook. If you somehow were able to make all 10 accessories already, click on the video to your left to learn several ways to repurpose everyday tin cans. And if you're all about fun hacks using items around the house, click the video on your right to discover three different hacks for making an awesome cell phone stand. We did it, girl. I'm Jamie, and you're on girl.com.